Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Happy, Sad, Confused. I'm Josh Horowitz. Thanks for watching, listening, joining us however you are, whether it's on Spotify or YouTube. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, or else you're going to miss awesome episodes like this with the one and only Melanie Winsky. She's the best. She's pure goodness. No pressure, Melanie. You're the best. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're the best. Stop it. Uh, guys, Yellow Jackets, The Last of Us. She's basically on every show you're obsessed with. She's like one like House of the Dragon or Real Housewife away from just like taking over TV entirely. Does it and feel that way? And Severance. Yeah. And Succession. There's a, there's a lot of great shows I'm not on. That's the other thing. She's got really good taste and you're about to learn that. Um, uh, again, guys, remember to like and subscribe and enjoy this conversation with Melanie Winsky. Um, Melanie, welcome to the podcast. You, you, you kind of been on before, but I feel kind of remiss. Like you, we did a small thing years ago, you and Elijah. Yeah. But I, but I feel like I fucked up. You, you deserved your front and center moment long ago. So I'm making up for lost time now. Welcome to the podcast officially. Oh Thank you for having me. I'm so honored. First of all, any moment I get to hang out with Elijah is a good one. So that was a very fun time. I remember it. And that was a great movie. I'd like to get into that one again, too. Um, did you did you have anything to do with getting Elijah in on the Yellow Jackets fun this season? Or was that just kismet or, or no, what? I had no idea. And he didn't. We text every single day, basically. We're still on a text thread from I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're always in contact. And then at a certain point, he said, see you in whenever we were going, see you in August or whatever. It was like two weeks out. I was like, what are you talking about? And he hadn't tipped you off that they were talking. He just was like, Hey, by the way, I'm like, in your show. He never said, you know, I'm having a meeting. Right. Is it like just, uh, here I come, but it was he's, great. It was so great to have him there. The nice surprise. Yeah. He's, he's, he's pure goodness and light in the universe. Um, so, okay. So talk to me about, look, um, it's weird to talk in these terms about someone who's basically been working consistently for 25 or 30 years, but to some on the outside looking in, it's like, oh, they've discovered Melanie Linsky in the last two years. Like, so it's like you're having this moment when like all the cool kids know you've been doing amazing work for a long time, but like, give me a sense of what it's been like for you having written the ups and downs of a career to kind of have this, what must feel like an interesting moment. I mean, does it feel like a strange yeah. time? It does. And I, I love that you're saying that also, because it is funny to have like a 30 year career <laughs> be kind of, you know, I've read some interviews where people were like, blah, blah, blah. She did a bunch of stuff, but now. And I'm like, <laughs> well, let's not throw all that out. My, yeah. <laughs> I'm proud of my career. I worked really hard. I was a working actor, you know, like to me, that was all I ever wanted. So my dreams had already come true. I had done all this work and felt really good about it. I was making a living. Uh, I didn't expect to suddenly be in this position. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's wonderful, but it, but it's a, it's a big surprise at, at this point. Well, it, it, look, I mean, and you're more aware of this than anybody, but like you've had this fascinating career where like, it does feel like, look, actors love and appreciate you. Filmmakers love and appreciate you. Critics love and appreciate you. And then like, then there's even like the kind of the broad, like two and a half men world loves you. Right. And then there's this like gray area in between it all that maybe doesn't like, 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 which is kind of like what you're now like tapping into, I think, because you're in what you haven't, I guess, had are like these zeitgeisty kind of shows like two and a half men is a huge show, but yellow jackets last of us are like the shows that like engage Twitter, engage the media, engage conversation. So I guess that's the difference. Yeah, I think you're right. I That is the thing that I have not had before. Like Two and a Half Men was the number one show on television, but it wasn't about me. I, you know, I had a small role. I came and went. I wasn't on it all the time. Um, so I don't think people really associate me with that show. And also right. this is a different, like the zeitgeist thing that you're talking about is like very new for me. Is it, well, because I, I know you're, you're someone that's, that's always kind of been plugged into like into the social media world. Like you like, like we, we all know you through social media and in person and you're like, you've always been like very kind of accessible and nice and normal. Like, Oh, this is someone that oh. loves what we do and we, we, we vice versa. Right. Oh, and, man. and again, these shows like spawn these conversations. So I'm curious, like what, what's it like to be in something like yellow jackets the last couple of years where like you're in that show 
where it's like the Reddit board, the Twitter threads, the the conversation. Like, ha- have you engaged in that? Is that fun? Has it been fun for you to kind of like experience yeah. that? The Twitter stuff has been very fun. It's very fun to be part of two different shows where people are reacting in the moment, like reacting as it's airing. That's a completely new thing and so, so, so fun. Um, And, you know, most of the time when people are reaching out to say something to you on Twitter, it's positive. I don't sort of obsessively like look up the shows or my name or anything. I'm not trying to see anything that I don't need to see. Yeah. When people are saying things to me, I enjoy it. I looked on Reddit a little bit. It's not for me. It's too. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. It's too much. Too. It's, it's too much. It's a level. It's a level beyond what I can handle myself. Yeah. There's yeah. so many awesome people. It seems like, and fun theories and stuff like that. And but then, it's hard to not see a lot of negativity. So I just I was like, it's better for me to not look. Do do the lines ever get blurry because you do like know a lot of. I mean, you engage with journalists and stuff like that, like, and by look, by and large, they all love you and they're going to say nice things. But like, have you ever had that instance where like someone you follow writes something and you're like, oh, like, do you, can, can that get a little weird in, in a way when you have relationships with folks that are I know commenting I on it? About that. I think everybody who I do have relationships with and I do like follow and admire, it's such genuine, like. Uh, fangirling on my part like I really mm. admire like people's work like your work and and so many other people I just it's something I'm very very passionate about and everybody who I truly love I think just their ethics are too good to have them be clouded by like enjoying someone on a personal level so right. I would really really hope that anyone who I've had any kind of interaction with on social media or in real life or whatever, if they saw me do something that wasn't good, I hope they'd say like, that wasn't great. I, I, I really believe that people would. Um, I don't know. There's been, I remember a few years ago, I was in a movie and David Rooney, who's a critic that I really love and admire, wrote a review and said that I was not great in the movie. And he was right. He was absolutely right. It was, it was a bad experience for me and I wasn't, I held something back. I just Mm. was feeling so vulnerable in the environment and I just wasn't, um, I wasn't good. And it just made me respect him even more. I was like, oh, wow, I love that he can see that. Like it was a very gracious way that he said it. Um, But I felt very seen. I felt very, you know, I was like, he's a great critic. Well, there's a difference between, yeah, just, you know, shitting on people for no reason and actual thoughtful yeah. criticism and, and uh, you know, taking in the scope of someone's work and understanding that an attempt was made and not making it up something exactly. mean. <laughs> and criticism, I think, is is so fascinating and so worthy. And I read, if I love something or I don't love something, I'll read every review I can. It doesn't matter. Like, I want yeah. to see people's takes on it. I want to see the conversation. I want to see what people who are much smarter than me have to say about it. So, you know, the same goes for my work. I read every review and some of them are good and some of them are not as good. What about, what about taking compliments from peers or filmmakers you admire? I uh, let's, 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 let's receive a compliment for, uh, for a second. Cause I'm sure you've had moments where you're working side by side with someone and you have them say something that must melt your brain that like this person that I've admired for decades has seen me, as you say, and, and has accepted it and, 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 and enjoyed what I've done. Can you pinpoint, is there a moment or two that jumps out at you of like, Oh, wow. I I'm up here and I, and I've earned the accolades from this person. I mean, when I did Mrs. America with Kate Blanchett, the, the greatest actor, um, she gave me a hug when I met her, she gave me a hug and she was like, finally, I've wanted to work with you for so long. And I just was kind of, I didn't even expect her to really have a concept of who I am. And I said, oh, I didn't even think you would know who I was. And she was like, are you joking? She couldn't really believe. She was like, we came up together. And I was like, no. (laughs) (laughs) That's the case. I think that the trajectories were kind of different. Um, but very kind of you to put it that way. Um, 
So that was a moment where I was really like, oh gosh, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. Yeah. I, I, in a much different way. And this is not about a compliment for me, but like I had this recently because I've been around for a bit and it's like, you see people through different stages and you kind of like, they, they have an association with you. It's like, I, I saw Anthony Mackey at something and I've known him for 15 years and he like, he brings me in for a hug. He's like, we came up together, man. I'm like, Anthony, you're Captain America. Like, like <laughs> what do you, what, I've been talking into the same microphone for 15 years. Like, I feel like I'm like stuck in like a cage and they're all ascending, but it's, 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 it's very sweet when, yeah. When you kind of feel a connection with somebody that you really admire in that way. And they, yeah. And you're so memorable. You're so, I mean, you're always like, it's always such a great conversation. And I'd love to like, listen to you have conversations with other people every time I've talked to you it's been great it's yeah it's, and it's okay. always like, it's not surface level it's always you know you're getting to the heart of something it's always well it, it well I appreciate it we don't need to make it about me but like it's legitimate love as you know like I like yourself I love this stuff so like you know yeah for most of us, learning a second language in high school or college was not exactly a high point in our academic careers. I know it wasn't for me. I tried Italian, I tried French, and none of it stuck. But now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. I'm doing Italian because I I love to travel and I love going to Italy and I want to engage the culture in a little bit of a more profound and meaningful way. And yeah, I want to be able to order better in Italian restaurants, okay? Mabel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new lesson and language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Plus, you can choose from over 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. They've got lessons that you can access, podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20 day money back guarantee. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free, guys. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to babbel.com and use promo code HSC. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code HSC. Let's talk a little bit about how Yellow Jackets came to be. How, who, who, get, who gets credit? Do the do, Does Team Linsky get credit? Does the psychic, New Orleans psychic get credit? <laughs> Fatima. Fatima, Fatima, I can't get a booking with now, and it's my own fault. Oh, because she, you've you've blown her up. Yeah, you've. So, yeah. so for context, this is a psychic. Had you did you know her prior to that? Like, was this like a one off? Or no, I've been talking to her for a long time. Not that often. Every every few months, I'll check in. There's always some insight. I check in at the beginning of a job because she's very good at telling me how to navigate um, people, how to talk to different people. She's very good at that stuff. So before I go into something, she's given me some very good tools about how to be with certain people because I have a lot of social anxiety. Yeah. Um, she, yeah, just in the middle of the pandemic, she just said, no, this huge time is about to happen to you. You're going to be having a moment in your career that you thought because it didn't happen when you were 25 that it was never going to happen. And I just was like, I don't think that was possible. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. Yeah. And when you when you read Yellow Jackets, how does that read on the page? I mean, is it are you a good judge on a first read of something that like this something is there's something special here? I'm really good. It's my it's my one real talent. Um and sometimes people will ask me to read things. My friends sometimes will be like, Can you just read this and tell me if it's good or not? Just on a gut level, you can usually respond to something yeah, and know. I just know if the writing is good. There have been a couple of times where I've gotten scripts, you know, that were going to be made by big filmmakers, really great filmmakers. And I've gone, this isn't very good, <laughs> you know. Wow. Yeah. And I have to say, this is not great. Like, I understand I can't pass on an audition for a blah, blah, blah filmmaker, but. <laughs> and and did, but, was the know, proof in the pudding? Did the, the, the those films generally turn out? To, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm, I just it's one thing that I am really good at. Um, so I knew it would be, I knew it was good, I knew it was really good, and then 
I saw that Karen Kusama was going to direct the pilot and I was like, oh, well, then it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. Just yeah. the elements that were, so much was going on in the pilot and the kind of horror female relationship, like the balance of that, that was the only thing I was like, somebody needs to be able to find the balance of all these different interwoven things. And then they're like, oh, well, we have that actual perfect person yeah. to do that because that's something she's magnificent at. Um, And I just, I was like, I think this is going to be really good. The surprising thing was after we filmed the pilot, I heard nothing. I didn't hear Showtime likes it. I didn't hear. That was great. <laughs> like silence. So I was Just, like, I guess it failed somehow. I guess right. like my picker was off. I don't, I was really confused. And was there an explanation when it finally, when you got the news of what the delay was? Just one of those things. Just one of those things. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, there was some vague, like, oh, the pandemic. I was like, okay. The pandemic happened like a year after. <laughs> We shot the pilot, but okay. And then it came a catch-all for excuses for everything, yeah. Yeah, it got picked up on the last day of my option. They had an option on me for a year. And I was at a point where I was like, okay, so tomorrow's the last day of this option. I can finally audition for television or say I'm available or whatever. Oh, amazing. So you knew that. You you had that on the calendar. You're like, okay, now I now I open myself and yeah. So annoyed it is. And a year is a long time. Yeah. Yeah, to not be able to do any TV. So I was like, okay, it's tomorrow, and then I'm free. And then they were like, oh, we're picking the show up. I was so confused. I was like, Whiplash. all right, okay. And was the idea of kind of you kind of share this role clearly, and that's an unusual circumstance. Was that exciting, intriguing? That like, okay, this is going to be. I mean, obviously, all of this is a collaboration, but this is going to be a unique kind of collaboration. Yes, there was a lot of um, kind of trusting going on when I signed up for this pilot I was the first actor who signed on so I didn't know who else would be in it and then I didn't get to see tapes or anything of the young me's um I wasn't familiar with the showrunners and so there was a big part of it where I was like I hope they get it right I don't I don't know I you know we had a hair and makeup fitting and I met Sophie there Sophie Nalise, who plays young me, and she was in a full panic. She said, I just got cast. I don't know why they cast me. I look nothing like you. Uh, your voice is so high. I've been watching videos and your voice is so high. I was like, nice to meet you. She was really so stressed out about it. And I just was like, oh, God, what is going on? And then we did the table read and it just worked. Yeah. Energetically worked. And then I wasn't worried after I after I saw that I was like, oh, we're playing the same character. I um, I mean, the ensemble's great. The young actors, obviously, your contemporaries, all fantastic. I had I had Juliet on the po podcast last year, and that was a treat. Yeah. I mean, such a character and an icon in her own right. Now, is it true? I, I read like in, you know all this like random like IMDb trivia, and it's been said that like when you moved to LA, you you watched a lot of TV and films and stuff, and that you kind of mimicked a lot. Was Juliet one of them? Was that in the repertoire? Is that true that like she was? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I had to audition for a character and I can't remember what the movie was, but um, it kind of reminded me of uh, California natural born killers. Like I was like, let me watch, you know, some Juliet Lewis. And then I just kind of went down the Juliet Lewis wormhole. I was staying at the time with Joss Whedon. And his wife and um they had a lot of dvds and blu-rays i guess was the thing sure. um and oh no it was laser discs it was how long ago was it <laughs> now we're so, dating so, ourselves yeah yeah, yeah 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 um so they had a whole wall full of laser discs of any movie you could possibly want so i just used it as kind of like film school i just tried to watch everything and it's like, what if I need a New York accent? What if I need a New Jersey accent? What if I need a Southern accent? Like, what kind of Southern? I was trying to just watch everything. But then I really got stuck on Juliet for a while because she's just so fascinating. And she's Oh, yeah. Very so unique. Like, they're not, they're not five Juliet Lewises. There's one. There's one. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe they found a younger version. Right. I, have you, I can't have, believe it. Have you done your Juliet Lewis to Juliet Lewis? Do I do one? 
have you, well, that's what I'm saying. If you were like watching, if you were listening to the voice way back when, and if you were oh. kind of. <laughs> oh, that, no. I also don't think there's an impersonation to be done. I mean, she's, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't ever. Just <laughs> don't sell yourself. Look, I just saw the Drew Barrymore impression, which <laughs> is pretty, was that, has that been in your repertoire for a while? Had you, did you just take that out of the closet? Like dust that off? I guess I told somebody that story once and they were like, that's a good impression. I didn't really realize I was doing an impression. I think sometimes I'm telling a story and people's voices come out of my mouth and I don't really know that I'm, <laughs> I guess it is an impression. Yeah. The, uh, so um, a lot to cover because I want to go backwards too, but I do want to mention a little bit of Last of Us, which I just I just devoured. And I'm not even a gamer, to be honest. I never played the game myself, um, but what a beautiful piece of storytelling. And so where did you, how did you come at that? Was that just like a, a, a total surprise? Did you know Craig Mazin? Like what, what were the circumstances around you getting involved? I, I knew Craig. Um, I got a text from him one day and he said, I'm going to ask you to come do my show. And I said, I'm very tired, Craig. I had just done Yellow Jackets and Candy back to back. Um, and he was like, please, please. He sent me this whole email that was about all the cool stuff to do in Calgary all the restaurants, all the stuff. <laughs> Wooing you with, yeah. <laughs> Wooing me. Um, and then, honestly, I just think he's so brilliant. And yeah. I just love him as a person. We we were friends. We met playing a game of Mafia. And then we became very good Mafia friends. <laughs> so. You're probably a very good Mafia player, I would guess. That's not fair to have. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm okay. <laughs> Some people have said to me, I'll never trust you again. <laughs> Yeah, this is like karaoke with Mariah Carey. You don't play Mafia with Melanie Linsky. I mean, I don't. I I think I have a strategy. I'm not good at lying, so I have to have a strategy, which I'm not going to reveal on this podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't want to ruin your f- future yeah. game play. No, don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, sorry. I, yeah. So he sent me the scripts, and they were just so good. And I had not seen a character like that. Like she was really written in this. I was like, who is this? Like the way she walks in to interrogate people and it's just so casual. She just pulls up a little chair and sits there and was just kind of asking them questions. I I just was like, this is very interesting to me. I really love surprising people, surprising people with a lot of power. Yeah. It's something that's really fun to play. And, and I so like sold. So did you know like your way into that character from reading it? Was it all on the page? Like, oh, I, I got this. Yeah. yeah. And it has to be for me. I can't try to figure something out intellectually. It has to be an instinct. I have to uh, read it and start kind of saying it aloud. Right. Otherwise, there's no point, really. So are either you or Jason gamers? Had you ever played Last of Us? Was Is anyone in your life? Jason. Jason, you know. And I said, Craig wants me to go do this show. It's really good. I'm just so tired. You know, like, do you think we can all pack up and go to Calgary? And he was like, what's the show? And I said, he, the, the Last of Us, I guess it was a game. And he was just like, oh, my God. He freaked out. He's like, it's my favorite game of all time. You don't know that it's my favorite game of all time? And I was like, I guess on some level. <laughs> you don't even know me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you know me? Um, and Craig actually told me the entire plot of the game and his show and i just was like that's incredible that's yeah. beautiful and the way he's casted from top to bottom i just had bella ramsey on the show like a month ago and oh my gosh like what a so good i know I he's know. just doing everything he's yeah. doing everything in a moment like and that was also what craig said to me because i was like oh i love pedro and he said he's absolutely amazing and this little person that I have (laughs) to play Ellie (laughs) is just so spectacular. He said, I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. Like, I can't wait for you to see what she's doing. No, she holds the screen. Like, yeah. And, and I, again, I'm not that familiar with the game, but like, cause you know, again, there's the crap online where it's like, Oh, she can't transform for the season two. And I'm like, if you've seen the three or four things she's done, she transforms each time. Yeah you'll be good. You, uh, talk to me after season two. You'll be good. <laughs> yeah. I, 
people, why do people want to be mad about stuff? Why do people want to dislike things? It's, yeah, that's their predisposition because it's easier. I don't know. I, we can't go down that rabbit hole. Let's keep it positive. <laughs> Today's episode of Happy, Sad, Confused is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Are you guys like me? Do you feel kind of a buzz when you find a deal? Do you feel smart? Do you feel lucky? What about when you're surprised by a deal? Does it feel like you're getting a treat for free? Well, thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes, it's a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Okay, how does it work? Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. You wait a few seconds, Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll find the prices drop. I know from experience, guys, I've just gone through this Valentine's Day, my niece's birthday, I had to get gadgets and clothing and gifts, and Honey was there for me. And Honey doesn't just work on desktops, it works on your iPhone too. You just activate it on Safari, on your phone, and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out, guys. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting happy, sad, confused. So get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash HSC. That's joinhoney.com slash HSC. So going back, are, are you are you now the most famous person to come out of New Plymouth, New Zealand? Are you are you like the celebrity of your small town? New Plymouth. Um, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> like, how small a town is it? Is it is it a small town? Like, how? Give me it's some context. Problem. It's like okay. there's like maybe like forty five thousand people, something like that. So okay. It's not like a tiny little town, but that's spread out over. There's like a lot of farms and communities. It's, it's spread out over a lot of land. There's one I, like Main Street. Okay. Yeah. No, I I know you 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 said before that like generally speaking you were you were a shy kid, and yet you also knew very early on this was the passion. This was what you wanted to do, and those things don't necessarily seem to. Uh, go with each other like I, like I guess like what did your family make of your predisposition to perform and act and what do you think it was for you at first like was it an escape was it a way of just socializing that's so funny my auntie who is probably the closest person to me said a couple of years ago she was like I still can't believe that you do this for a job this <laughs> shy little girl like she's like I still can't believe it I look at you and see you doing interviews and she was like I'm so proud of you that you're brave enough to do it <laughs> it's, it's really funny um I think for me it was just such an escape to be able to have lines like get a script and have someone say here's what you're supposed to say in this moment and be in somebody else's body like I was so self-conscious I was so worried about the way I moved, everything I said, you know, kids would make fun of me. I was always the new kid at school. Um, and I just was always terrified. And then suddenly I had the freedom. I was like, well, it's not me. Right. And I found this person would come out of me, uh, different people all the time. And I just was like, I didn't know this was in there. And then I got kind of addicted as a teenager to doing like improv comedy like theater sports it's called in New Zealand right that was sort of the extreme of being absolutely put on the spot and having to come up with something and trying to make a room full of people laugh and it was that was so fun and and then of course like it's 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 odd for anybody like in a career again you've got probably nearly a hundred credits I would imagine on, on the resume now, but it always heavenly creatures always has to be brought up because it is of course the, the one that broke you. And it's an amazing opportunity. The first film in your career. Yeah. And I mean, I guess just give me a sense of like, did you, did you feel confident when you stepped onto that set? Like, what do you remember about like, Oh, this is where I belong or like, Oh shit. I have no idea how to do what I, what, what I'm supposed to do, what Peter wants from me. Well, I have told the story before and sometimes people are like, that's terrible, but I don't think it was. I, In my second audition, when I was flown down to read with Peter, he showed me Kate Winslet's audition tape and he said, this is how good you have to be. And to me, it felt like setting a bar, 
it was helpful for me. First of all, because I got to see what I, who I would be working with. Sure. And like Kate Winslet. <laughs> I mean, I can't even tell you how crazy it was to see that person's audition tape. I just was like, what? <laughs> Sorry, I've never acted before. And he was like, she's a professional actress. She's been working since she was 12 years old. I, that's it. And so I sort of felt once I got the part that he must have felt like I had done that. Sure. Because he said, you have to do this. Otherwise, you're not getting this job. And so I felt like I must have done it. I didn't know when I was doing it. I had an amazing acting coach with me for that audition. And it was a day long audition. And it was kind of like 24 hour drama school. Like she taught me everything she could. Her name's Miranda Harcourt and she works with kids a lot. And she works with Nicole Kidman, if you've ever heard of her. <laughs> um, so she's an amazing, amazing coach. And then on set, I had a couple of other acting coaches, Jennifer Ward Leland and Sarah Pierce, who played my mum, was coaching me a little bit. So I was learning all the time from women I respected. And I felt I felt their kind of pride. I felt their acceptance. And I felt like Peter was happy. And gradually, I think over the first month of filming, I got to know that feeling of being depleted. <laughs> Just being right. like, this is all I have to give. In the best possible way that you kind of... Possible yeah. way. Mm. There was one day where he made me reshoot a scene that we'd done first thing in the morning. I thought I was wrapped. And he said, we're going to go back and do the scene with you on the telephone. And I was like, no. And he said, I think there's more in there. And we did it again and there was. And so I really came to understand pulling it out of your insides until there was nothing more to pull out. Right. And and that was um, just the greatest training you could possibly have, I think. And I, I would imagine in a way you, you're always chasing that feeling again. Like you want to feel at the end of the day's work, like you didn't leave an idea off the table. You left it all out there. Yeah. Because there's, there's usually no going back. So you might as well. Yes. That was why I gravitated towards character roles when I when I didn't have that many opportunities because then at least I could feel like, oh, I've created this person and this person has come out of me. It's right. this accent, it's this different physicality, or it's, it was, every time I had to audition to be like somebody's girlfriend, I didn't know how to just be sweet and just there. I didn't, you know, some people are great at that. Right. And I just, I was like, I'm too self-conscious. There's too, I'm just supposed to just be me. Right. But the prettiest version, like, I don't know how to do that. Was there any part of, like, I guess one rude awakening, maybe that's too harsh a term, out of something like Heavenly Creatures, after a first role, you realize, like, you form these relationships with Kate and the crew and everybody, and it probably feels like at the time, like, we're going to be together forever. Yeah. We, ha we will have this bond <laughs> forever. Yeah. And then you quickly learn the nature of the businesses. Yeah, some people you keep in your life in different ways, and some you don't because it's a traveling circus and you move on to the next circus in a way. So was there an adjustment period of like, oh, wow, I've just like, I've made these what seem like insanely profound bonds and now it's like, on, I have to move on? It was, I guess when I lost touch with Kate, it was more heartbreaking than some breakups <laughs> that I've had. Oh, gosh. It, was, it was so painful because of, and it wasn't like anything happened. It's just she became a gigantic international movie star and she didn't have a lot of time. And then suddenly she'd be in Los Angeles and not have time, you know, when I was living here. And then she'd be there and I wouldn't hear from her, you know, and it just sort of like sure. gradually happened and it happens in relationships. People kind of drift apart. But I was, it was so painful for me. And it happened a couple of times, like, I remember one time I did a movie with this actor and when we were finished, I said, oh my gosh, I'm just so happy that I met you and we have this friendship. And she was like, yeah, I'm not friends with actors. <laughs> I don't stay friends with actors. <laughs> and I was just like, what? <laughs> oh, Old. It, yeah. yeah. Well, it's been really great hanging out for the movie, but, and I was so shocked by it. 
this compartmentalizing of like the compartmentalizing and the now that you know and that was someone who'd been working longer than me and i think was used to yeah no we move on we yeah. move on and this is just a couple of months of our life but i was so sensitive i was always like so injured by losing these like great loves i was having and you know you, I, I, it got easier sure yeah. you must have crossed paths with kate though in recent years even like the ward circuit and stuff like that no no, no. I saw her at the premiere of Away We Go. Away <laughs> suddenly I was like, is that the name of it? Away We Go. <laughs> Sam Mendes, um, yeah. yeah. That beautiful movie that I'm so proud to be part of. I that's the last time I saw her. So I don't Got remember it. that. It, it is it is fascinating. To see her. She she did the podcast uh, recently as well. And it was mm -hmm. it's fascinating to like look at how both of you kind of like had these amazing early experiences and both kind of dealt with the crappy parts especially for young women <laughs> coming out of that. And like, she's been very outspoken, I think in a great way of talking about how like the media treated her and how she was talked about. And then you've been like, uh, you've for good or for bad, have become this poster child talking about a body image, which I'm sure you're like sick of, and I'm not going to go down that road with you too, but it is, <laughs> but I do think it's very telling that you both have like the two pillars of this movie, both went on very different paths and yet both were kind of, abused in different ways by the system and then kind of like yeah turned out you know what i mean i don't really have a question there it's just it strikes me i guess i don't know yeah um, she was like a huge inspiration for me the way she was handling all that as young as she was and you know i know she's like a very very confident person but she's everyone's sensitive and she's very sensitive and the way she was dissected and talked about and i remember at the time just being so furious on her behalf especially because like Kate Winslet is now in the world. Like Kate Winslet is doing movies and you're getting to witness that talent. And those yeah, this is a gift to us. Yeah, exactly. This is like a life changing act. This is like an actor that comes along once in a generation, like just focus on that. Like yeah. also she's, it was tiny and she still is tiny. It just, it, it infuriated me so much. And I just was always amazed by how gracefully she handled all of it. It was always really impressive. So I want to talk about, uh, I mean, we obviously don't have time to talk about every film, <laughs> but one, a few that I do want to mention, I know it's an important one for you is Shattered Glass, which seems like um, an important one for you for a number of reasons. I love that movie. It's a film that I think, again, critics and folks that know, know, and maybe doesn't have the, the cultural stickiness it should have because it's from written, I believe, and directed by Billy Ray. It's yeah. got Hayden Christensen. You, Peter Sarsgaard is fantastic in it. Oh, good. Uh, um, what was there a, kind of any kind of awakening or or remembrance from that experience that like changed your perspective on the business and and the kind of career that you wanted to have? That movie changed everything for me. First of all, working with Billy, I felt like such a collaborator in a way that I hadn't really since Heavenly Creatures, and I felt respected and I felt. It was fun. It was really, really fun. And I just respected him so much. I loved the script and I just loved everyone I was working with. It was such an incredible cast. And when I saw that movie, I remember being at the premiere and just something inside me, I was like, this is how I want to feel every time. <laughs> this is yeah. the only way I want to feel. And it didn't always happen because I didn't have every option available to me, but as best I could, I tried to make choices that were in line with that movie and how that movie made me feel. I really did my best to, to create a career that I could be as proud of as I was of being in that. Well, and look, you've been associated and been a part of some amazing acting troops, but also been directed by some amazing folks. I mean, in 2009 alone, you look back at that year and it's Sam, Sam Mendes, yeah. the great Sam Mendes, and away we go. It's Jason Reitman and Up in the Air. Yeah. It's Steven Soderbergh and The Informant. Yeah, but the greatest ever. My fa my favorite. Soderbergh? Sorry, everybody else, but like <laughs> Steven Soderbergh. Just... A genius. Just like, yeah, he's uh, he's hard, he, he is another unique one, isn't he? In that like, yeah, um, yeah for an actor, does, I, my, my sense is he kind of like gives you space. I mean, do you like to be given space or do you like the, act, the director to kind of get up in your business and kind of work, work very closely with you? I like to be given space. I like to feel like a grip 
or a costume assistant. I like to feel like we're all doing a job. Right. And unless you mess something up, nobody's going to come in and tell you like, hey, lay this track like like this, you know, like right. maybe, oh, you're hemming this. You might want to do this type of stitch. Like, okay, I got it. Unless yep. you see me do something terribly wrong. And in that same regard, like I don't like a lot of compliments. I don't like someone coming up to me in between takes and being like, oh my God, so beautiful. I love this. I love that. Like you don't do that to the crew. I don't, it's a waste of time Yeah, and I don't need it. You know, just tell me what was wrong. Tell me what you need an adjustment on. Yep. So for me, Stephen is like the perfect director because it's very much like that. I saw one time after a take, I saw him kind of go like this and it looked like he was wiping a little tear away. And I said, are you crying? And he said, shut up. So <laughs> that was like the closest <laughs> uh, compliment land. He's, he did, he did say a lovely thing to me once, like outside of work that really means a lot to me. Um, but just at work, it just felt like working. Yeah. And I love that. And I also just, every idea that he has, it, it just was so fun. But then, oh. but in that same year, to, like you said, like Sam Mendes and Jason Reitman in that same year. Yeah. Just, it it was crazy. The learning that I, that I got on each of those experiences from each of those three directors, they're all so different, but so, the, but masters, they're all just masters. They're so great. Have the, have like the goalposts for your own career, for your ambitions changed Thanks to what you've experienced the last couple of years, you got your first Emmy nomination long overdue for season one of Yellow Jackets. Um, Candy you got amazing, you know, reception for that. I mean, it's it, it, you know, you haven't talked about Don't Look Up. They're, they're, they, you know, the, the 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 hits keep on coming. Does it kind of like rejuvenate or excite you about like what what the next five, 10, 15, 20 years of the career can look like? I'm hopeful that there are. 5, 10, 15, 20 more years. Melanie. <laughs> that's my that's my hope, you know. That's all I've ever wanted is to keep going. That's all yeah. I've ever wanted. So everything that happens that makes me feel like I might get to continue doing this is exciting. I understand that this particular moment is, is a little blip in the grand scheme of my career. It's not going to be like this forever. I'm trying to just take a deep breath and enjoy it and not panic just hope you know I'm still choosing things the same way I you know I read a yeah. tiny tiny little indie that I would work on for five days maybe and I think I'm gonna do it like I nice I I still want to do things that make my heart feel something well it does strike me like you you've worked in virtually every kind of scale production you talk about kind of like that improv early background and I, I think you've done some stuff with Joe Swanberg in that in that yeah. realm too right um like does it do you do you think in terms of like the kinds of stuff you haven't done like I guess you haven't done what like the musical you haven't been in a Fast and Furious movie you know what I mean like are there things like that that you want to secret into the universe that feels like I I wish I would be thought of for this kind of a thing or do you not think in that way I don't really think in that way. I kind of know it when I read it. Mm -hmm. I can absolutely tell you, I hope I'm never asked to do a musical. If I get a script for a musical and it's wonderful, that's going to be a real heartbreak because I don't want to sing or dance. I, that is <laughs> within me. I'm okay. not a musical theater kid in the slightest. Um, I mean, if there was a great part and fast and furious, I you mean, know. It's good enough for Helen Mirren, I guess. It's good enough for Melanie Linsky, true, right? True, I forgot about that. I mean, there's all <laughs> kinds of things that I personally love. Like, I love Tyler Perry movies. Oh, sure. You know, like... Yes. Yeah. I've never been asked to do a Tyler Perry movie. Career is young, don't worry. Okay, let's end with this. The happy, sad, confused, profoundly random questionnaire. I'm going to ask you a few random bits and bobs. You tell me what comes to mind. Okay. Um, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Either one, float your boat. I've only seen Lord of the Rings and also Elijah, Peter, you know, I have the Kate, my, my hat is, is there. Fair enough. What's the wallpaper on your phone? Oh, it's my daughter. It's her beautiful little face no. in her Christmas concert. <laughs> yeah. uh, last actor you were mistaken for? 
Alison Tolman. <laughs> I just, it happens all the time. And I don't really think we look that alike. I think there's two kind of curvy ladies with brown hair in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, guys. But the number of people who are like, I have, I wondered where you went after Fargo. <laughs> well, she did plenty of stuff after Fargo, and I did plenty of stuff after Fargo, but I was right. not. Fargo. Right. Well, Fargo would be not a bad next oh, one. Amazing. And also, she was incredible. She's she was. So, she, it's a good person to be mistaken for. She's wonderful and she's beautiful, but I just don't think we'd look very similar. Anyway. Uh, we were kind of touching on this. What's the worst note a director has ever given you or the worst note a uh, director can give you? Somebody came up to me once with a confused look on their face and they said, when you did the scene in the audition, it was funny and now it's not funny. So can you make it funny? <laughs> can we go back to that thing and back like, in the room? Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's not a bad note. It just was oh. like so awkward. Um, what's the, if, if I was talking to Jason, what's the most annoying thing he would say about you? I can't imagine there's anything. What gets under his skin that you so do? Many things. I'm late. <laughs> I'm always late. It drives him absolutely crazy. We sat in frosty silence yesterday at my daughter's swim lesson because we were two minutes late, which I don't think is bad, but oh, come on, yeah. um, he loves to be early. So that would be the thing. Okay. Also, I have misophonia. So eating noises, he's a very good eater, but if he has cereal, I can't. Just leave the room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Happy, sad, confused. What actor makes you happy? Brian Tyree Henry. So amazing. Oh, man. You can't take your eyes off of him. Yeah. Just, uh, there were moments in Causeway where I, like, cried with joy at the actor. I just was like, this man. I'm seeing this performance, like, where he's just holding the bottle against his face and telling that story. And it's just like, oh. I've been obsessed since Book of Mormon. Love it. I love it. Uh, movie that makes you sad? Oh, Sophie's Choice. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, <laughs> it shouldn't make you happy. That's the correct <laughs> emotion. Think, can't even think about it. Mm. And finally, what's the food that makes you confused? Um, Like American things. A lot of American things like root beer. Why? Oh. It's the taste, it's the taste I don't understand. We don't really have it. And then also oh. like sweet um, and salty things together. Oh, okay. Yeah. You like it sweet? You like it salty, but never but too I like shall meet. Salty. I don't really like sweet things that much, but okay. I don't know why. I why mess them together? I got you. Together, I don't get it. Okay. Fair enough. We've really got into the heart of you today, I think, Melanie. Uh, <laughs> um, like I said, this is so long overdue. You know I'm a fan of yours, and um, you're always welcome here. Congratulations on season two of Yellow Jackets. People catch up. By the way, when I was catching up and I when I watched like the recap of season one, just to refresh, I was like, oh, my God, a lot happened. This is a crazy oh show. <laughs> this is a cra I, I forgot how crazy a show this is. I but know. I know. So much happens in every episode. It's great. You get your money's worth. Uh, people should check it out if they haven't already. Last of Us and the 1,200 other projects that you're probably working on. She likes to work in the best possible way. Um, thanks again for the time, Melanie. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for your patience when I was late. It's, See, it, always, always late. The lateness. <laughs> All good. Have a good one today. Thank you again. You too. Thanks All right. So I'll see you around. Much.